Careless. Hello there. You have came to this video because you have heard of CrowdStrike and Windows going down today, yesterday, something's going on on the internet, uh, planes not flying, banks not working, and you are probably seeing the channel name and expecting me to dunk on Microsoft or something like that, but no. I'm going to disappoint you. What happened today is that apparently CrowdStrike security software uh, has deployed a faulty update which crashed Windows servers and desktop workstations, but that's maybe slightly less relevant in the grand scheme of things. You know, when planes don't fly, you don't really blame the desktop machine, but rather the servers, right? But why this happened? If the security company CrowdStrike has deployed a faulty update, why did everyone install it at once? You know, because when you have a company, you usually, I mean a larger company, you usually have some kind of IT department and your IT department is in charge of deploying these updates. And good practices tell you, tell you that uh, you should be deploying your updates to maybe one computer or two computers, testing the waters out before deploying to everyone, especially if, if your company is not made of like uh, three servers and uh, 10 computers, but rather thousands of computers and who knows how many servers, right? So generally, I would not point my finger at either Microsoft or CrowdSource and I'm going to explain once again. So the end administrator is the one who takes care of all these computers, all these servers. So they are responsible for maintaining these computers, right? And in the other case where your company don't actually have this kind of IT team, but I'd rather relies on some kind of cloud service, then I guess you're putting your trust uh, into an external team and they will pay fines according to contract. Your business is going to lose some money. Uh, your cloud provider is going to lose some money because they're going to pay you uh, what they owe you for breaching the contract. And this is getting a little bit complicated, but generally I wouldn't really recommend using cloud services, at least not when very important work is being concerned. You know, if you're running a small office uh, with some, let's say, designers who work in Photoshop and something like that, it's not a mission critical job, you know, if, if something goes down, you can easily swap to a different computer which still works. Uh, it, it's, it's not life-threatening, it's not uh, very business impacting. If you are having such an important job, there is some common sense in IT best practices that tell you that you should be responsible for your own updates and for maintaining your own computers. Meanwhile, why did Microsoft operating system even allow a security software to crash the whole operating system that's kind of beyond me. And I'm not saying that Linux is completely tamper-free in this regard. It's just that fundamentally it's differently designed from the ground up, both Unix and Linux. And in this particular case, I don't believe that this would be possible to happen, but I'm not claiming anything. I, I'm not that smart. I'm just saying that a business who relies their profits on Windows servers, it's, it has always been kind of odd to me. I completely understand desktop users who prefer Windows because every one of their friends are using Windows. Uh, all the games work on Windows, uh, all the uh, commercial software works on Windows. It's just, you know, easy. It's just you go to the store, you buy a new laptop, it comes pre-installed with Windows. You don't have to think about it. It just works. It's a product and everyone has it. It's it's compatible and, you know, using Linux is difficult. Using Linux is hard. It's hard to install. There is no software for Linux. There is no video games for Linux. Linux just sucks, you know. So you, you should not use Linux on desktop, ne never. But on servers, uh, I mean, 
on servers, I have, you know, ho my whole life, I have never understand why would anyone use Windows for servers? What does what your business needs uh, on servers that requires Windows? It, that, that part is not very clear to me. I mean, if you use email, there's email, uh, th there's plenty of email servers on Linux. If you use web servers, uh, the best ones are on Linux. If you use databases, all the databases that you could possibly need are on Linux. All the developer tools are on Linux. Uh, you know, th the list goes on. So this kind of baffles me. Why do companies decide to go with Windows, right? So it is what it is. Anyways, uh, I want to wrap this video up because I wasn't even planning to make it this long. It, it's just that uh, after today, if you are a business owner, you might reconsider who do you put your trust into, not which operating system, but which company takes care of your uh, business, right? So which system integrator or something like that. And if you wish to reconsider your operating system of choice, that's completely up to you. And I'm going to see you in the next video.